Welcome to Seems to Me with your co-hosts, Sibeline Sariano and Steve Ricardo. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. That was funny. I was waiting for the, the rest of the intro to happen when I go, hello, and it didn't happen. So I'm going, hello now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. How are you? I'm good. You got your Rolling Stones shirt on today. You're rocking out for people that can't see it. It's Got my awesome. Rolling Stones rock and roll T-shirt. I'm starting to pull out my rock and roll uh, gear to wear it in here because I feel like I have to dress the part. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the it's all best, about the theme. The best dressed woman in Boston over here is saying she has to play. You always look amazing. Come oh, on, thanks, Steve. Well, he's dressed in a collared shirt. I had to, and he's wearing orange and blue. So I got to give him a little, you know, tip in the hat to this cute. I mean, it's it's actually yellowish you orange. You love yellow. And our engineer Mike's wearing yellow. Yes, too. I was very <laughs> proud of him to see this. And part of I just just uh, posted this weekend about all the yellow that's popping out to you know to me right now. So all the guys in here are wearing yellow. People, this is good stuff. It's <laughs> all because it, of it. you. It's all because of you. <laughs> oh, if I just do my little touches here and there, you know, we'll just one guy at a time. We'll change the world of fashion here in Boston. <laughs> no more fleeces, boys. No more fleece vests, please. Okay, I don't the know fleece what a vest. fleece vest is, oh, so Jesus, hopefully I've never thing worn they ever one. Created. So we have a great show for you today. Super excited. We're going to kind of be a little bit um, off the cuff. We're a little bit less... Uh, regimented, if you will. Scripted. Yeah, that's the word. Um, so we're going to cover the Oscars because I know it happened a week ago. We're a week behind here, but, you know, it would have been the Sunday before we show, do our show. And, you know, we need to catch up. record the, on Monday. There was already, you know, stuff that we were talking about. So we're going to talk about um, my best dressed and not so best dressed because I hate saying the word worst because, you know, you tried, you tried, you gave it a good shot. <laughs> you just didn't make the best cut. <laughs> Best dress cut. Um, Nomad, Francis McDormand, Trent Reznor, and some other fun topics after that. We'll leave you we'll leave you waiting. Yeah, I'm ready, I think. <laughs> um, I just want to talk about a couple things about my weekend. Um I just want to talk about a couple things about my weekend. I ended up going to Encore Boston and played blackjack at the tables. Did you win a lot of money? Nope. <laughs> I donated a lot of freaking money to uh, Encore Boston, uh, and so did my friends that I played with. None of us, I mean, like, we would win, and then we would lose, and then we would win, and we lose. And when you're playing $25 a hand, you know, they really need to get with the program over there. Like, Is this we're the place not in Vegas. Everett? Yeah. Okay, it's I've never been there. The giant new casino that I've went up here in Boston that's in Everett, Massachusetts, that's trying to be uh, the cosmopolitan of uh, <laughs> Vegas. Okay, if anyone knows Everett, Massachusetts, uh-huh, you don't know exactly. how funny that is. Oh, it's <laughs> hysterical to me. I'm like, this used to be like the, the ghetto, and now used it is. To be. I mean, it's, yeah, I know. Well, I mean. Is it nicer now? Oh, God, Steve. You go up 99? Go Broadway in 99, you won't even recognize it. I got to check it out. It's like, oh, it's like an adult <laughs> playground. There's lights everywhere. It's like the ho- the, the casino is gorgeous. I mean, it's freaking gorgeous. I, it's I, really well done. I, want, I try to stay away from casinos because I'm like a slot guy, you know. And once I start playing slots, it, like I was going to the casino in Pittsburgh a lot when I was living there. And once I think I won 150 bucks, and every other time I went, you know, to the ATM machine. <laughs> That's like called gambling. 10 times. <laughs> yeah, it's like I. I'm, I mean, I'm, come on. I, I'm not I, a good I went to the ATM and it was sad. Yeah. It's, I was like, this is when you know 
you've started to go downhill when you actually get up and go to the ATM. But whatever. It was fun. The way I look at it is I have a set amount of money that I go and I spend. And once I've hit that, I, I leave. I, I, I'm not going to like You're clean good. my bank account out. But I, it's fun to me. It's so much fun. And the banter at the table. And we have these two young guys that were like brothers. And they slapped down hundies on the table when they were like, you know, getting their like chips. And we just had so much fun. And like what I love about a good table is that everybody's helping each other. Like sometimes you don't know what to do when the dealer's showing a five and you have a two or you have a ten. I mean, not a ten, but like if you're showing a two but you have a Talking ten about underneath. Blackjack here. Yeah. Do you not know it? I I <laughs> I don't, I used to play blackjack when I was young, but uh, okay. Let me you let need me twenty one to win, right? You need yeah, <laughs> yes, you need twenty one to win. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, generally a ten and an ace, which equals twenty one. That's what you're looking for. But when the dealer's showing an ace, you got to assume the dealer has a twenty one, even if he doesn't. But you kind of just assume. So you you know they ask you if you want insurance on your hand and yada yada yada. Um, if you have double eights, you know, if you have double aces, I got double aces, you guys, like that was like epic. And then I didn't get 21 on either of the hands. So anybody that knows, uh, cards right now that's listening will appreciate this. I actually have a really, really good friend from Syracuse university and her husband, Ben, I'm going to do a shout out to to Janelle and Ben. How do you manage to mention Syracuse in every single episode? Is this, this is not going to happen every week. Well, do you, did you like college, Steve? Cause I really enjoyed my college I don't college mention experience. Framingham State University exactly. in every episode. If you had gone to Syracuse University, you might have done, do this too. <laughs> okay, orange woman. All right, exactly. I'm an orange woman. So anyway, Ben knows. I did see Carmelo Anthony play against the Celtics last night on TV, not in person. Oh. And he's, a, he's, he's from Did Syracuse. he do the catwalk on the way in uh, in a nice dress <laughs> outfit? <laughs> they, didn't, they don't always show the entrances. They show the local team. Well, maybe they did, and I missed it. They do show certain guys. I, I, honestly, I missed that part. I, I, did, I was on Netflix. Who won last The night? Celtics lost. That sounds like it's a trend. So we can talk about the Oscars instead because we're not going to talk about the Celtics losing. Well, I just want to go back to what I was just saying about my friend Janelle and Ben. I used to go um, play blackjack with them. And we've gone to Vegas. We've gone to, you know, the Hard Rock Hotel actually in Vegas is probably one of the best places to play blackjack in Vegas. And Ben knows cards and he knows how to kind of count cards is that what they call it (laughs) you you didn't hear it from me but if you're gonna say it it's something like that anyway like he kind of taught me like if a bunch of tens come around and everybody's showing like um face cards or tens the next round of hands is generally going to be lower cards and so it's just it's just I, I I'm fascinated by the strategy of playing cards and and my grandfather taught me how to play poker (laughs) My grandfather when I was like eight or nine. Hey, my grandfather took me to the horse track when I was a kid. There you go. See, this was what our grandparents did. They played cards. I mean, was your grandfather in or was... He was a loser at the track. They wanted to... uh, um, Like, was he a veteran? Did he... Was he in a war? No, he wasn't. He he just liked to go to the track a lot. My great-grandfather was a winner at the track. My grandfather wasn't. I, I've really never done horse racing or – I mean, I've gone to like um, – what's that one that happens down? I don't <sighs> like any kind of animal racing, by the way. Yeah. I'm totally against it. I, I find it – I understand and that. And I'm sure every one of our listeners will not be happy to uh, hear this, but I find it just a way for humans to make profit off of animals. That's well, you all are very much an animal – Lover. Uh, lover and lover of all animals and not cool to – you know, abuse an animal. I, I, I don't know if I 100% think that people are abusing a horse when they horse race them, but if you feel that way, I respect that. I mean, gain, I meant to say gaining profit from the use of animals. You know, humans are just trying to profit off of But animals. you're trying to profit off a podcast. I mean, what's the difference? I'm not killing anybody. <laughs> But they're not killing. I'm going to kill anybody. you if we don't talk about the Oscars <laughs> in about two seconds. I, wait, <laughs> You're right. just digging me deeper and deeper, uh-huh. and now all the writers all right. are going to hate me. All right. Thanks a lot. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody has an opinion on everything. 
All right. So best and not so best dressed of Oscars. Um, Regina King takes the cake for me, people. Oh, man, did she look outstanding. And Louis Vuitton, it was this gorgeous, structured dress that had beading, um, linear beading, and it was this beautiful blue, light, a light blue-ish, um, sky blue on her dark skin. It just really, and this incredible voluminous sleeve, uh, almost like a cape, capelet kind of thing happening off the shoulders. And I just, I like, I gasped when I saw her. She just was truly stunning. And the bottom of the dress, I mean, it was uh, a mermaid-shaped dress, so it hugged her curves. She's a curvaceous woman that was showing her curve, Steve. She... I really have to say that Regina King has come a long way in Hollywood. You know, she used to play second fiddle to everybody, and now she's, um, you know, she's a leading lady, and now she's directing. This was her directing debut, I believe. She really has just shown us her for tour de force here. And this dress, absolutely, she showed up like I am... I am a leading lady, I am a director, and hear me roar. It was awesome. Um, Viola Davis. I mean, actually, almost almost uh, every woman on my list is a beautiful black woman uh, that was best dressed at the Oscars this year for me. Um, Viola Davis, who is an outstanding actress, and I just was, again, taken, so taken by her look this year. It's a white... White dress. There was a lot of white at the Oscars this year, Steve. Um, I was very My surprised. My least favorite color. Yeah, I was surprised. It's not a color you see at these award ceremonies very often. There was a lot of people that wore white. Um, she was dressed in Alexander McQueen, who is no longer with us. So whoever's doing his collection on his behalf, I, I tip my hat to them because it's not easy to carry along an incredible legacy like Alexander McQueen. Um, Alexander McQueen took his life in 2010. Oh, that's um, sad. Yeah, I think he suff- suffered from depression and he, he, you know, he committed suicide, which is a really big loss for the world of art and fashion because he, he really, um, he, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he crossed this line between art and fashion that a lot of designers don't do anymore. And it was very haute couture, and it was always an edgy and dark and yet sexy and bright. I mean, it was just this... These, his collections are are really, really something. Um, always a work of art, truly. And and structured and, and art... You know, architecture and uh, so much. Anyway... What Viola Davis had on was also very curvy, curvaceous. It was, you know, her boobs were right out there. Um, We had a lot of cleavage on this dress, but it worked. Um, I think she gained weight for her role or something because she made mention of that in one of the interviews. So I don't, I don't know. It was um, Ma Rainey, uh, that movie Ma Rainey something. And I, I I apologize to the listeners because I haven't been able to catch up on all the Oscar films yet, um, and I hope to, but she had this embroidered kind Ma of... Ma Rainey's stuff. Black Bottom. Yes, thank you. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and I don't... I, I assume it has music in it. Is it I about Billy um, Billy Holiday, maybe? Because the one of my worst-dressed gals is the Billy Holiday gal. Um, gorgeous detailing on the upper bodice. It just was like interwoven. It was very art deco now that I think of it. Again, um, a lot. both of these two pieces for me were very architectural dresses mm. um, in a lot of ways, a lot of structure and divine detailing. Halle Berry, I really loved her dress and the color of the dress. Um, I... I got to tell you, I was distracted by her hair. Um, she has this very blunt uh, bob that she did, and I was uh, not digging it. I, I don't like that look for her. I love it when she's got this soft, smooth, sexy, sultry thing that she does with herself that works for her. Um, but I she love this- it when your opinion's unmerciful. <laughs> 
Uh, when it comes to fashion, I will not give mercy. <laughs> you shouldn't. You know, I mean. I so. mean, I, I got to be honest with you. I didn't pay a lot of attention. The only thing I remember is that, and I don't want to be mean right now, but Frances McDormand's mm-hmm. dress was just. I don't know what it was. I gotta tell you, I didn't even put her on my worst dress list. Or I my love her, but I don't so know what that list. was that she was wearing. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't even really notice it because it was that unrememberable. Unrem- you noticed it. You just don't want to mention it. No, I, I love her too much, and we're gonna give <laughs> her too. lots I'm of sorry. props today. So, I'm s- hey, I, I don't want to end up on Francis the Francis McDormand negative list because I think she's a fabulous. Yeah, actress. she's. W- w- l- hold on, let's hold that thought because I want to talk about her a lot today. But um, I'm gonna give also a. a an honorable mention to Viola Davis's husband or the gentleman that she was standing with. I assumed it was her husband. He was in a white, creamy white tux jacket with a black satin lapel. And the two of them just rocked the runway, rocked the red carpet to me. I mean, really, nice. like, outstanding couple. Um, I also think there was a little boy that was from... Mer- oh, shoot. What's the um hold on hold 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 this little guy? Um Alan Kim is the real winner of the award season. I love it. He's this nine year old little um little boy. He stars in the Minari film and it's just like he's got a little tux with shorts on. He has his socks pulled up and his one sock has three white stripes. I was just really impressed with this little guy. And you know it's it's hard for these little actors to to go to an award cer- ceremony. Someone has to and dress them exactly. It's like you don't generally see a tux for nine year olds, you know, in every store. Right. <laughs> so he also gets an honorable mm-hmm. mention from me. Um, again, uh, trending the runway. I I saw. I mean, trending the red carpet. I saw um, white, and then gold. Gold was a big color this season as well. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with my worst dress, dress, which was gold. And uh, it goes to Andrea Day. Uh, <laughs> she is in basically a bad bathing suit. It is, <laughs> it's just awful. And it's like so risque and stupid. And it's like half her belly is showing, half her leg is showing. It's got all sorts of weird straps and she was just Andre Day from Andra the, uh, the United Day. States versus Billie Holiday. Yeah, it was Billie Holiday. She, she plays Billie Holiday, Billie Holiday yeah. which I mean, what a character to have to play. I mean, oh, Billie yeah. Holiday's got a lot of sides. Amazing. Talk about a Gemini with lots of sides of, uh, and who knows when sad, she was born. But, sad ending. But. Oh man, I mean, I love Billie Holiday. I'm I cannot say a bad word about her and just what she did for blues and jazz some of my favorite songs are billy holiday songs but this dress honey <laughs> it's bad it's really it's like a bad bathing suit <laughs> made into a dress and it's a wanna it's just wannabe dress it's awful and it's a vera wang shame on you vera Ugh. uh runner up if not worse than this one is emerald fennel in gucci what the <laughs> fuck were you thinking I mean, this thing is atrocious, and I don't, I, 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 I can't, it's like a bad curtain times 1,000. It's green, and it's pink, and it's frilly, and it's sequindy, and she's pregnant, and it's like she's just dripping in frilly, frilliness, and it's chiffon, and it's gaudy, and it's awful. It's just goddamn awful. And, um... Vanessa Kirby. It's also Gucci. Gucci hits two. Okay. Hello, Gucci. You need to take some notes on Tom Ford's Gucci because Vanessa Kirby, it's like she's wearing a dress the color of her skin and it's horribly fitted on her. And it also has a cutout. There's lots of cutout bellies at the Oscars this year, which was just stupid it's too a bad. stupid she's a trend. really interesting looking woman she I, is she's beautiful. yes she's from another country i'm not sure which one but she has an accent and she's very stunning very physically you know visually stunning but she's bad English. bad 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 what born in england oh okay yeah i didn't catch a british accent on her though and then we'll talk about glenn close because like i don't love her right. outfit but man glenn close doing the butt 
<laughs> I did see that she's a scene. She stole the scene. She stole the Oscars. Period. I Boom. Mean, Mic drop. <laughs> she knew so much about the song too. It was remarkable. Remarkable. So you know, this takes us into. I'll give a um, a quick honorable horrible mention to <laughs> Zendaya. Because she was wearing neon yellow. She was wearing the yellow that I'm seeing everywhere. It was Valentino. I just didn't dig the dress. I, I think a lot of people liked it. I didn't. Um, again, I don't need to see your belly in an Oscar dress. Like, your belly is for the beach. It's not for the Oscars. That's what I got to say. So, uh, Frances McDormand and Nomad. Uh, very, Nomadland. very proud yeah. of these ladies that really took the cake here on... Um, on Nomad. Do you want to talk talk about that stuff? Yeah, well, you know, Nomadland, I did see the film, and I was, like, blown away by it. And if you haven't seen it, it was based on the uh, 2017 nonfiction by a woman by the name of Jessica Bruder, and it was directed by Chloe Zhao, who won Best Director. <laughs> they really cleaned up. They won Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actress. The McDormand's character, Fern, it's about a woman. She loses her job. And her husband, she loses her job and her husband. She buys a van and drives around the country looking for work. At one point, she ends up in this uh, community in Arizona where she learns about basic survival skills. And uh, her and Zhao, this is interesting, her and Zhao and the other crew members lived out of their vans for the course of the production. And several uh, real-life nomads are in the film, which to me... The film as a whole was was very inspiring, but it was also depressing. But I got to tell you, I knew she was going to win the Oscar when I saw the film. And it was halfway through it. I was like, she's going to win because she was fantastic. She made herself look like a homeless person living in a van. She, she can do that. She, she really morphs herself Yeah, so She's got three Oscars now. Fargo, yeah, Fargo, Fargo, everyone knows Whoa. about. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I haven't seen that film. I'm going to go back it. and revisit that. She won the Oscar for that. And now Nomadland. And, and can uh, we talk to the fact that she was an almost famous? <laughs> you, are, you, are you like, do you have a camera like in back of me wow, looking at my no, screen? No, but we are like two peas in a pod. I was going to say <laughs> she was great and almost famous uh, that we previously discussed. Discussed. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actra- Actress. She was also... What's your- for that movie? Yes. Yeah, okay. Makes she was sense. also nominated for Best Supporting Actress for the 1988 film Mississippi Burning, oh, 2005 what North an Country. What movie. Uh, that she, was good. She's like one of the great... She loves good scripts. I mean, she seeks them out. She knows what she's doing. She she can. I mean, she may not be able to dress herself, but man, that woman can figure out a script. When she did that howl when she won, <laughs> and they panned over to her husband, Joel Cohen, <laughs> the look on his face was... Priceless. What was he looking like? He didn't have any expression on his face at all. I can only imagine what he was thinking right then and there. But to be married to a Cohen, like, they must have the most interesting, bizarre conversations for breakfast. Can you imagine? It was Like, the two of them are just such odd ducks, but like... I think they met during Fargo. I'm not Um, positive, but it was funny because I went... Was that a Cohen? That was a Cohen? Yeah, I went back and watched her her speech when she won for Fargo, just because I do things like that. And she thanked Ethan Cohen before she thanked Joel up there. She's like, Ethan, just help me through this film, you know? Thank you, Ethan. And they were sitting together. I don't know if they were together or not, though. I'll have to look that up. Right, well, there you go. Hmm. That's something I have to definitely uh, look up. But um, yeah. I haven't, I, I will admit, I haven't seen Nomadland yet. It's definitely on my must <clears throat> watch. And especially, I knew we were going to be talking about this today. And and um, I, I'm really proud of, you know, I feel like the Asian community showed up at the Oscars and showed up. I mean, they recognized you know, the Asian community yeah. um, on the Oscars, this, you know, for the Oscars this year, for the re- awards shows. And, you know, these, there's a lot of firsts happening right now. I mean, especially c- with Chloe and, you know, the woman who got the best supporting actress for Myrna. I, I don't I didn't catch her name and I apologize, but uh, she, she I, I don't know if I can pronounce it. Yeah. Um, Soon Ja. Minari? She's funny. Soon She's ja. super funny. Her acceptance speech. 
<laughs> just it was hard to understand, but she you could tell she's got a great sense of humor. My one disappointment, and I love Daniel Kaluga, and I'm not taking anything away from him for winning Best Supporting Actor for Judas and the Black Messiah, was that Sasha Baron Cohen didn't win for The Trial of the Chicago 7. He played yeah. Abby Hoffman. That movie and Nomadland, I didn't see all of these films, but I, those two movies I could see being like Oscar winners. Yeah, I did start watching Chicago 7, it's and I great. forgot that I had, and I was like, oh my God, this is all about like, you know, fighting the war and, you know, what was happening with Vietnam. I mean, it's a very important story. And they disrupted the Democratic National Convention. It's funny because, you know, they're probably all a bunch of liberals. They were. Abby Hoffman and those guys were not. They weren't exactly on the right. Incredible cast that they that they did. I mean, the court scene with the judge, it's like. Clearly, this judge is so corrupt. He's so corrupt. The whole you know? trial is corrupt, mm. really. It's it's a. That, I gotta a, finish watching it because I I started it and then I didn't finish it. That's something we might want to revisit at a in a at a future episode after you watch the film. If yeah, you want to talk about that film, I would like to. There's a lot to be Nomad said too. about that film. So just to come back to Nomadland, because when I was designing for the brand that I was working for last uh, in t- 2019. I met a lot of people that were in this whole, like, living in a van thing. You know, and when you think about the whole, like, Chris Farley from SNL, like, I'm just a man, you know, a man with a van living down by the river. But, I mean, it's so much different than that. And you think about the 60s and, like, the late 60s when the hippies all had their, you know, VW buses, the magic bus and this and that. It's a whole thing now. Like, people are getting vans and souping them up and they live in there and they're, like, showering on the on the road. <laughs> and I don't know how they shower. They I don't know how they're even it's getting, like, a working thing in It must be rough during the pandemic. <laughs> well, and, but a lot of people are doing this that, that that we're doing this before the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, think about that's what the movie's about. Yeah, really. right. I mean, yeah. it's it's a thing that's happening right now. It's a trend. It's people are doing it on Instagram. This is like their their livelihood, and they're living off of like endorsements and sponsorships. And there's this chick Bri- Brianna Maida that I follow that is um, living in you know, the canyons with three dogs and she lives in her van. I mean, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a trend, literally. I, but I, it doesn't but I, bother me. No, of course yeah. not. No, but what's interesting is that it's a trend for these hippy-dippy little, you know, millennials. And yet there's this whole genre of people that live like this, the nomads. Yeah, And they're that's not real. the young little hipsters right. that are trying to do the Instagram millions, right? I didn't know about this young hipster oh, uh, scene. Oh, it's a thing. Wow. It's a thing. It's totally a thing. And I had to follow it because of the brand I was working for. Did you want to segue into uh, well, Reznor let's do now? music. Yeah, yeah let's do I was going to say Reznor yeah. won the Oscar for Trent Reznor. Soul. Uh, Soul. But he previously won for the Social Network in 2011. He works with another guy named Atticus Ross. They were nominated for two different uh, awards, Mank and Soul. And Soul won for Best Original Score. And um, it's interesting because afterwards, uh, I know you want to talk about your favorite uh, Nine Inch Nails song, <laughs> but uh, Do I, I, I did read. I did read just the other day that th- that they're working on a new Nine Inch Nails mm-hmm. record or or music. They said they're working on new Nine Inch Nails music right now. Naughty Nine Inch Nails music. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Did, did um, Mike want to give me a note or something? Or is he just taking notes? Trent Reznor is a Tony away from E G O T. What does that mean? Do you know? <laughs> um, a Tony away from. I just don't know what E G O T means. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar. Oh, oh really? Wow, I didn't know that. That's so. Oh, so he needs a Tony Award and to he'll get. Win, he'll one have of, all four. He'll have an EGOT. <gasps> Who would have thought about that when you first started listening to Nine Inch Nails? Who would have thought that could happen? This is a guy that grew up in the middle of nowhere in PA, and his idea of moving to a big city was to move to Cleveland. (laughs) And he moved to Cleveland, and Nine Inch Nails ended up getting signed by TVT Records, and now... 
he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, I saw Nine Inch Nails uh, at Woodstock 94 when they came out covered in mud. It was one of the most amazing things You were telling me about this on Saturday, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. They knew they had to really bring the goods because the order of the bands of the last three bands that night was Nine Inch Nails, Metallica, and Aerosmith. That's the way they closed out? (laughs) Yes. Was this the closing of... It or was this just the closing no, of that this night? This was the second night. It was three nights. This was the second night. It poured through Aerosmith's entire set. But we we were out there in the rain. We dug it. So this was 1994, correct? Yes. You were talk, telling me about this on Saturday. Woodstock, uh 25th anniversary. So I started to tell you this, and then somehow we got segued. So I'm at a party in Newark, Delaware, okay, at this night. And we're watching it on TV. And... We're all bumming because I swear to you, like, I love Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix. I have the albums of the original Woodstock. I've listened to them. I listened to them in high school, in college. Like, I mean, when my friends were listening to, like, Q102, I was, like, listening to, you know, Is that a shout out to a Delaware radio station? Yeah, something like that. (laughs) Uh, that's just what came to my mind. I think that was the station. You 102 yeah. in Delaware. Yeah, 93.7 was the other. W, uh, WMMR was the rock station. But um, I was always just, I would like picture myself at Woodstock, like the original one, like how we were Me talking too. about. Right? Like what an epic moment in time to yeah. be there. And again, would I have been jumping in mud and doing mud slides and Probably. you know taking ecstasy? Well, not ecstasy, but you know LSD. I don't know, but again, I would have been there for the music for sure. You and would, so you'd be taking the brown acid. Oh God, don't take the brown <laughs> acid. I remember that on the re- on the, on the record. Yeah. Um. So I'm at this party, and I'm with my high school friends, but I'm in college, right? And all of a sudden, these guys were like. Dude, let's get in a car and go to Woodstock, man. And I'm like, really? Really? You Are- didn't get in the car? I absolutely got in the car. I got in the car with three strange guys that I didn't know. I did not know these guys. They you weren't went my to Woodstock school. 94? I drove to Woodstock 94. We got all the way up there because the they had just said how the gates had I mean, the, the, yeah, the, there you were know no people gates. were like just barreling in, <laughs> yeah, right? It, everything was And gone. then by the time we got there, they had already gotten a handle on it and people weren't getting in. And so we uh, fucking turned around and came all the way back. I was like Wow. What did I do? This was the stupidest drunk decision I've ever made in my life. Well, you're going to be really upset when I tell you uh, this, but I uh, I had a hotel room <laughs> ten, damn, ten, I didn't miles, even know you. <laughs> 10 miles away from the, the uh, venue, but I spent most of the time at the venue. I was working for A&M Records, and okay. a bunch of us went up there to help pick songs for the double CD that we put out, so cool. and I was lucky. I was one of the ones that got to go. And I saw 27 performances in the time I was there. Twenty, I averaged wow. nine a day. Wow. and uh, that's awesome. And Nine Inch Nails was one of them. Okay. And it was that one fi- that night, Nine Inch Nails, Metallica. And what, it's funny because I'm play? not a huge fan of it, either, any of those three bands. I mean, I respect them all, but they're not one of my favorite. Like the bands I start, saw there that I loved were like bands that other people were probably could care less about, you know? Like, the band played, you know? And, like, uh, I was at Green Day's show in the mud. Lee Von Helms played? Yeah, Lee oh. Von Helms was there. Uh, well, you know, it was the remaining yeah. members because uh, Robbie Robertson wasn't there. Uh, Roger McGuinn from the Birds replaced him. Richard Manuel had died. Bruce Hornsby played keyboards. And then they had these guests. They had a uh, uh, couple guys from the Grateful Dead, Yorma Kukinen and Jack Cassidy from Jefferson Airplane Hot Tuna. That was great. And then I saw Paul Rogers, his all-star band. He had Slash. He had uh, uh, Jason Bonham on drums. He had Andy Partridge from Free. I mean, I was checking out stuff that other people didn't really. Yeah. Although I saw Dylan. I saw the Allman Brothers. I saw wow. Joe Cocker. You know, I saw Crosby, Stills, and Nash. You know, I went to like. All, 27 sets. But um, oh, all those guys played? Yeah, there were two stages. Wow. And uh, that's why I was in a car with 
three strangers because yeah, I wanted know, to see that shit. Some of the things that happened up there were incredible. Like I ran into a girl I knew out in the middle of the field and we were so happy to see each other. We started making out and I'm making <laughs> out with her. Her name was Kim for a while. And then That's she's like, we're done. She goes, you, man. she goes, I'm really sorry, but I really have a bad sore throat and swelling oh, glands. Jesus. And when I got home like two days later, I you was definitely sick. ill, but it was worth making out with her in that field. <laughs> Making out in the field of at Woodstock, joy. Plus, and I met flowers. My, I met a good friend of mine. We're still friends now, Susan Capiccioni. I met her and hung out with her during the um, the that night that I'm talking to you about Aerosmith, Metallica, and Nine Inch Nails. Well, I'm watching the video of my favorite Nine Inch Nails um, music uh, video, <laughs> so I'm going to tip my hat to You're one of my- watching it right now while, yeah. we're, while well, we're recording? I, I'm like, kind of like, <laughs> what is this? Is this the one? Um, Just don't turn the volume on, or we'll have a copyright infringement. Yeah, no, you know? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so back at Syracuse, freshman year, um, my bestie from Syracuse, Christy Johnson Griffin- she was, she is a, and she's one of our listeners, and I know she's subscribed. She introduced me to a lot of music, and she was a big music buff, and still is. And um, she was big into Nine Inch Nails, and I want to f you like an animal. We could say fuck on this. Oh, show. okay, you can say it, just in <laughs> case my kid listens. I don't know, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, Josie, if you listen. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, I'm sorry to all the Josies that might be I listening. I know, right? Because it all could of be our at least kids two. are listening now. <laughs> this is this is the uh, you know podcast that we have to think about. Like was, I'm a mom, that was a and my out. kid that might was, be listening. That was a shout road. out to Lev because she has a Josie. Too, we both know. have L, L, uh, We both have Josies. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know, man. That song she played that song for me. This was like a song that I don't know her boyfriend in high school had introduced her to, and I was like wow, this is, like, really good. Like, I love the beginning. Again, I like that, like, dirty, funky, deep beginning of songs. Like, you wrote it always gets sexual me. and animalistic in the notes that it you is. sent to it's me. It is. It's sexual and animalistic. It's just, like, I want to fuck you like an animal. I mean, what, what more can you... <laughs> What more can he ask for, really? Get thrown <laughs> down on the bed? What more can you ask for? I think we should we should segue <laughs> to sex toys next. <laughs> Are we going to talk about sex toys? All right. Well, I Well, like them. I didn't write that in my notes. Yeah. You did. I thought you wanted to talk about sex toys. <laughs> Okay, now don't be making that up because I've already I I don't need any more millennial I women know. coming oh, after me. Oh, stop! Whatever. <laughs> Who cares about the millennials? I'm sorry, millennials. We care about you very much. We do. <laughs> the look on your face. <laughs> we got to get the video oh, cameras man. rolling from now on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So. I didn't mean to- all right, so like my intro to Nine Inch Nails is "I Want to Fuck You Like an Animal." I mean, is there a better song than that? Hurt, I would say, is there. Uh, that's I love really that song. hard for me to listen to. It's too dirty, ha- angry. Johnny Cash's version though is so oh. good. Uh. Whoa! I will say, I have I have a music friend who introduced me to Hurt by Johnny Cash, and I was hurting at the time that he introduced me to that song. Man, I don't know whose that. idea that was. It could have been Rick Rubin. It could have been Johnny Cash, whatever. It could have, you know, Reznor probably was happy as hell when he heard about it. But what man did they nail that cover? Unbelievable. Oh. So wait a second. At what point did, when was this song even written and, it and was, recorded? Well, he, I don't, have been early I'm not 90s, the hugest huh? 90s Nails fan, so I can't tell you the I've year, right but it was years after that Johnny Cash covered it. I was going to say, I didn't even realize that he was, like, alive for that, but I guess so. Um, yeah, he was very alive when he recorded the song. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, right. It was painful to listen to his version, too, because you could tell he was channeling his past drug problems, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's such a dark... Uh, thing here. Okay, so this says um, it was released on March 8th, 1994 by Nothing Records and Interscope Rector- Records. Yeah, Interscope. Does that sound yeah. right? Johnny Cash's Pretty version Hate was Machine after that. was 1990, um, 1987, uh, 89, sorry. So was that from that album? I 
you're stumping I'm, I'm me now. Thank you for this. doing this again. Sorry. We're going to have to edit this whole part out. No, we're not. This is what it's all about. We're learning. We're learning about things that we learn about that we know about. Wait. So Trent Reznor moved to the same house where Sharon Tate was murdered. Yeah, he lived there. What? And that's yeah. what we covered in um Once Upon a Time in I'm Hollywood. I'm sorry I didn't bring that up, but here's Whoa. the thing. He got kicked out of there because the neighbors were all complaining because, you oh, know, he used it, as a it was turning into like a... a <laughs> I mean, I can't believe he went and lived in that house, first of all. Would you go live there? I wouldn't live there. No, you know? hell no. But he's so dark and, you know, his music is so dark. Okay, so... So anyway, Trent Reznor got best score at the Oscars. We love closer, closer. That's what I thought it was. Okay, because I I think I always thought it was called Animal. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have it written down as Animal. It was on the Down Downward Spiral album in 1994. I'm sorry I took that. I should have just picked up my phone and looked it up. Oh, yeah. And I apologize because I'm not a huge. So- I it, like Trent Reznor, but I don't know everything about Nine Inch Nails. It is a concept album detailing the destruction of a man from the beginning of his downward spiral to his death by suicide. The downward spiral features elements of industrial rock, techno, heavy metal music, in contrast to the band's synth pop influenced debut mm-hmm. album, Pretty Hate Machine, right. in 1989 and was produced by Nine Inch Nails frontman Trent Reznor and The Flood. Or and flood. You know, um, he's a wow. real hands-on guy. You know, he probably Who doesn't are they need to. About? He doesn't need to work with any producers. He's like he's a genius, basically. He's a, he is a yeah, ge- the I fact that agree. he's scoring all these films now and the the music and the social network is so oh, dark and yeah, gloomy. Totally. I love it. I, I mean, I remember it. watching that movie and just being like stressed out listening to the music, and that's what it's all about, right? He's trying to like. So, did have you listened to the Soul song? Like, I don't know this so- song yet, but if it's a kids movie, right? So, I mean, I guess I'll have to watch it anyway. It'll be cool. Um, so. <laughs> uh, we're either going to segue I love when you interview me about these things and I'm like uh, I don't know <laughs> but you're allowed to say I, I don't know, know. I'm sorry I, I, I don't, could I, say I don't know I know he won the Oscar there's plenty of things I could say I don't know about for fashion and by yeah, the you way you know everything no I don't know everything I'm never going to pretend like I know everything but I have a surprise for you Steve you want to see your surprise wait you're giving me a surprise during the show yes okay that was the whole plan okay. <laughs> I didn't know that was the plan but okay you said you love surprises alright you don't okay. even know what the surprise I, is yet I, uh, so everybody I'm going to give a huge, huge shout out to my my good new bestie at Nordstrom's in the North Shore Mall in Peabody. I went to Nordstrom's this morning. I was there at 9.55, just before they opened, because they open at 10. And I walked in and went right over to the Tom Ford counter. Oh, no. And mm. I went, and there was my buddy, Jay. Jay is one of the, um, I will pull out his business card in a second and give him another plug, but Jay is a gentleman that I have connected with at the North Shore, North Shore Nordstrom's for several years now. He's a phenomenal salesperson there at Nordstrom's, and I'm a big Nordstrom's um, shopper. That's where I shop. And they have they used to have incredible customer service, and Jay gives incredible customer service. I can't say that for some of the other people that work there lately, but um, wow. I went in and <laughs> Can oh, you I just give me my gift. No, not yet. <laughs> so I went in and I was like, okay, I'm gonna. Ooh, there's lots of yellow. I started taking pictures oh, no. of the yellow. I have great pictures for our YouTube page. And I'm like, hey, and that, there he was. And I was like, Jay, oh, my God. Listen, so I just opened up an art gallery in Selwa, Boston. And, oh, my God, then I was like a, a guest on my friend's podcast. And then all of a sudden it ebbed into having our own <laughs> podcast about fashion, film, food, and music. And last week we covered Tom Ford. And the week before that we covered Cologne. And I'm telling him the whole story. And I was like, can I ask you, could we have some samples of some Tom Ford Cologne? Oh, because no. I've been telling the guys that I work with that the studio that they need to have a wonderful scent for themselves. <laughs> so, without further ado, bum bum bum, drum roll, please. Look at this gorgeous bag. Oh, I love that. It's it says a- Tom. Can I keep the bag too? <laughs> 
Yes, Steve. Oh, you can keep I love that bag. That bag. So it Lev says, Tom Ford on says it. that she's going to challenge me when she comes on the show about scents and and cologne. Okay, Lev, bring it, girl. Because guess what? <laughs> I am never going to back down on my thought on cologne. By the way, Jay, um, Greg uh, Gregolovich. Greg, <laughs> shoot, he told me how to pronounce it. Gregolovich. Told, G- Gregolovich. Um, Jay Greglovich, who is the Dior and NARS counter manager for the cosmetics. He's fabulous. He and I just talked cologne for 45 minutes, which is why That's I was why late today. That's why you were late and you got yep. our engineer all nerved yep. up. Thanks I know, a lot for I that. I know. Sorry, Mike. I told you there was a good reason. So we sprayed a, a ton reason. of different colognes <laughs> on car. Are you telling me that my surprise for you isn't a good reason? No, yes, it is. It is. It's. I can't wait. I'm. I'm going to Plexi Indian give you in this fucking you cologne, and- motherfucker. <laughs> Will you give it to me then? Well, give I, it to me. Good. Stop it. I'm trying to tell you what <laughs> I sorry. did. Sorry, sorry. Because you can't just pick a cologne for somebody. You have. It's so personal. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay. So this one is Soleil Brulant. That's it's on one. the card. Well, yeah, I sprayed a bunch oh of cards. Oh my god! That's not for you, right? No. You don't like it <laughs> exactly. This is Tuberose New. I don't think you're gonna dig Tuberous that. Tuberose New. These are all the ones that he gave me that he thought Nev- we would no, like. No, this smells like something my grandmother would. Yeah, worn. that's it's <laughs> rose. It's all about roses. No, thank you with that. Yep, this is Mandarino di Amalfi. Amalfia. Amal- Amalfi, like. It's it, so he names he, he you know it's all it'll it, it'll this is pretty yeah, good yeah I thought it's a you little would more like subtle I'll put that in the good pile okay. I got a bad pile and a good pile over here yeah now. okay tobacco oud tobacco this one, oud this one's it's blended I think with some of these other ones but uh, I like that one that one at least smells good on the card right now this really does smell good right I actually like that. tobacco oud uh, that one may be okay Neroli <laughs> Portofino. I, some of these might have all combined I'm sn- together. I'm now. sniffing before I'm even getting the card. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, this is fantastic! I thought Nerolo that was the one that Portofino. I thought you would like the best. That's going to be. In the Remember one how you pile. were like? I told you there's one called "Fucking Fabulous." Uh oh. So I'm best for last, but not so much best for last as far as I'm concerned because I had I did not know how it smelled. So I I sprayed it and. I'm handing it to you. I don't know if that's your scent, but I think these all have combined I, a little I bit really together. I really like this. Oh, well, there you go. Fucking fabulous. It's fucking fabulous for Steve. Wow. So there's two all right. I love, Hold one I kind of love. There's more in this bag. Hold on. I wish we had a video of this today. All right, so. You got actual colognes? Uh-huh. Oh, no. Yeah, you love me, don't you? I do. I do love you. Oh, I know how to give a fucking I've good present, you, like and I know song. how to give a good surprise. Okay, oh, guess what I got, because I knew you would like it. You got fucking Fab or Neroli Portofino. Ding, 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 ding. Neroli Portofino. I'm going to be wearing cologne now. Yep. <laughs> All right, so it does. It smells completely different when you pull it out, because it's you know smells like alcohol, really. Okay. So that's that, and I'll give you Thank the you. bag, and I'll give you the little thingy, All but right. put some on now. Now, right now. Put some on now? Yes, because I want to smell it on you when we, when we finish the show. Where do I put it? Put it on your, like, hand, whatever, on your neck. No. Okay, we oh, really need geez. the visual for this, but we don't have okay. it. Okay, yeah. Now, wow. now, put some on your face now. Because, like, men wear it face? on their face, on their neck. Yeah. Like, if a woman's leaning in to say <laughs> hello to you, she, you want her to get a nice, nice whiff. Friend, I've come a long way from okay. blowing now, smoke with Twisted Rico. I'll tell open, you, man. <laughs> open that. Open that and put it on your neck, Steve, please. But I already put some on. I, I, you want me to again, put more on? Again, just, just a dab. A little dab will do you. That's where that came from. Okay, I can't wait till okay. I see people. All right, good. Start so, sniffing me. Um, here's the box that goes with it. Isn't that adorable? Thank, thank, it's beautiful. Thank okay, you. and then um, I'm going to... I. I I don't know if Mike Nash here uh, would wear cologne. You got Mike Nash cologne. Well, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm definitely gonna get him cologne. I this is the one I he he wouldn't give me like a thousand samples. You know, this is a lot of 
cologne, like perfume. Yeah. I got one for myself, of course, people, because okay. I, I, I needed to get my tobacco vinny because I'm actually out of it. And I just think tobacco vinny for Mother's Day would be a wonderful present for somebody to give me. Um, that's a hint to somebody that Do might be listening to this I get to keep these cards? Show. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. but I feel like we, I want Mike to smell those cards, too. There you go. Give me Here's another one. I want Mike to try this. Um, it's called Ode Wood, but I did get this for the gentleman in my life. But, Mike, I, this might work for you. So The gentleman this... in your life. Lucky guy. Mm. I thought I was the gentleman in your life. This, because it's, this one's like a manly cologne. No, you don't dig it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't dig it. Uh oh! Now he's gonna be the sick all day. He's gonna... Wait, really? Is it bad? That was Hold a great on. look. <laughs> oh, it, it changes, Mike. It'll change. It'll change. I don't think he's sold on your well, idea. All right, nice good. Try. Then he's not getting that one. Then um, we'll have to find a different one for well, him. Well, thank you. So that's my little present for you, um, and that's my surprise. Okay. Thank you very much. And I love um, it. again, just a shout out to Jay at Nordstrom's. Thank you, Jay, so much for all these samples. I will give you the bag. Don't you worry. <laughs> I was giving her hand um, signals because I like that bag. I want that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I became a Tom Ford fan all because of you. So I know. I love we'll, Tom We'll deal Ford with that now. all at the end, okay? I really that's, do love that's him. That's my pre- present for you. And um, I do want to plug that on um, May 7th, I have a brand new show at the, um, at the art gallery. Um, we are opening up our next exhibit. Um, I'm hanging it as we speak. It is an ode to the women in um, my life and my father's life. Um, I am featuring my mother, who is an incredible artist, um, Cornelia Cambia Davis, and she paints watercolors. Very talented. Um, she beautiful. has been painting my whole life, and she... I've just, seen some of her work. It's fantastic. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. It's really stunning. And when I when she came yesterday and we started to kind of map out the show, I'm just... I'm in awe of her work, really. Like, I'm in awe of both my parents' work, and I think that's what makes this project so personal and special, is, like, I'm getting to represent my parents as artists, and I've spent you know, 40 something years, like, or 30 something years focusing on my own career. Right. And now I'm kind of like flip flopping and I'm doing this art gallery to kind of, I went there for a third time this weekend. And I have to say, it's a great place to hang out next week. We'll be hanging out there again. So I'm excited. Yeah, On Friday, um, we're going to have our first Friday, which is May 7th Mm -hmm. from five to nine. We will have live music with the fabulous, wonderful Mark Femino again. I really just, I love him as a musician, and I just, I wanted to have him back. Um, so we asked him to come back, and he said yes. So we'll have live music from 5 to 9. And I'm, you know, one of the things that happened this weekend as I was in the gallery was um, I had this really great conversation with this older gentleman about how, you know, my vision for the gallery is just, you know, this this multi-use space. You know, that I really, I want to host events there. I want to have networking events. I want to bring, like, People that would never go to an art gallery come in for a networking event and interact with, you know, their respective um, careers, you know, Mm -hmm. within an art space. And whether it's I'd love to have like live music nights in there. You know, I was telling you, like, we will. I I have this idea (laughs) of like a second Saturday or a second Sunday or something like that. And, you know, one thing that was really cool on Sunday, the SOA open market finally opened. There is a real live farmer's market happening in the South End. Really? On Sundays from 11 to 3. Oh. Every Sunday now until October, there will be a, a farmer's market happening, which is great for all of us yes. that have the galleries. I love farmer's markets. I will say it didn't bring in a lot of foot traffic for us this past Sunday, and it might have just been— Oh, it been, will. Things are know, really starting to open up I feel now, like, so. yeah, the vibe is changing yeah. for sure. Um but what was cool is, like, um, Carrie Lynn and I, uh, before we opened the gallery, we ran down there and just started handing out postcards to everybody that was walking Good by idea. us. And just, you know, come into the art gallery. And it it worked, actually. There was some people that came nice. back. But it was really cool to see this this energy in down there because I haven't seen it yet. Like, it's been very, very kind of ghost towny, And this was just teeming with people teeming with people but they will they are they are doing 
COVID restrictions, so only 80 people can come in at a time, and it's in a big parking lot outside. Everybody's wearing masks still. So anyway, um, another thing that somebody brought up uh, to us this past week was for me to mention my hours. So my gallery hours are Thursday and Friday, 11 to 6, Saturday, 12 to 5, and Sunday, 12 to 4. And that may or may not change. You know, we're still trying to get a feel of what's happening down there. I am closed technically Monday, Tuesdays, and then Wednesday by appointment only. But I can certainly do by appointment only on any of those other days. I know that the um, assisted living facility that my dad is moving into in um, Brightview in Wakefield, they are actually going to bring all of their um, residents down to see my gallery, which is so That's sweet. Fantastic. Isn't that cool? They're going to yes. do a little road trip with the with the old folks. So anyway, I just wanted to give a little quick plug for, you know, first Friday, May 7th, 5 to 9. It's going to feature Cornelia Cambia Davis, my mother, and also my father and some of the um, mother motherly pictures uh, that he – or paintings that he's done. And the show is called The Mother Figure. Lovely. Do you um, want me to give out some new info before yes, we get up, go please, off the air here? Please, please, please. Uh, well, our email address, as I've told you guys before, is seems to me – C S S R. Before we go there, food this week. We um we were going to talk about our family recipes. Do you have anything that jumps out to you? Yeah, that first, first of all, I want to say that a lot of people that have listened to the show told me I was way off when I said I didn't know anything about fashion and food. So I want to take that good, back good. because I'm very fashionable and I know a lot about food and I'm a good cook. So I don't know why I said that. I thought maybe I was intimidated by Sibylline and Seriano. Well, the main reason is, is my two grandmothers and my mother, all Italian, all mm-hmm. from Italy, and they all were fantastic cooks. I mean, the sauce in my family, it definitely trickled down to me and I make really good sauce. And What I can, do you start I, with when you make your sauce? I'm curious. You're asking me to give you my recipe for sauce on a podcast right now. I, I start with tomatoes. Okay. Um, it's, you know, it's, Yes, it's, I don't. We're talking I, about food I've never and gone and by. I've recipes. never. Yeah, but I don't give out my recipe to oh, anyone. Oh, you don't. No, just I like don't. your age. You're like this big mystery. Okay, is this the mystery pick on man? Steve section of the show? Are you mystery man, Steve? Can't we just leave it that I make a really good sauce? Right. I'll and I, give my and recipe. I never will call it gravy ever in a million mm-hmm. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's just rubbed off down to me that the. I'll tell you one thing about when I make sauce. What the most important thing is: the longer you cook it, the better it is. One hundred percent. If you can start like more. at. Eight, 10 in the morning and then cook it till 7 at night. Are My, you cooking it in a, like, a, what kind of pan? A big giant oh, a big pan. deep pan. Yeah, my grandmother Rose used to start her sauce on Saturday and we'd eat the wow. sauce on Sunday. She'd have it Grandma simmering Rose. all night long. Was she a nana? Nani Rose, Nani yeah. Rose. And she Love was it. amazing. All three of them, Nananetta, Nani Rose, and my mother are all fantastic cooks. What's they, your mother's name? Anna. Anna, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. She was actually born in Italy. They all were born in Italy. Yeah. So I, I Studio learned... at Firenze per cinque mesi della moda. Wow, that was really good. I'm, I'm impressed. They all were fantastic cooks, and I learned a lot from all of them. But I also want to mention that someone that isn't in my family, Zach Shell from Baby Loves Tacos mm. in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. he's a fantastic cook. He has showed me a lot. I worked with him for two years, and I learned a lot from him, too. So everything I learned from my family was great, but learning from a Polish guy <laughs> from Pittsburgh wow. really helped me, too. And he has a very successful operation out there in Pittsburgh called Baby Loves Tacos. I love he, tacos, He's baby. taught me a lot. <laughs> I so, love a good taco. You know, let's talk about that for a second. Do you like cilantro? I love cilantro. So many people do not love cilantro. I noticed. I when Isn't that I, weird? When I make rice, I like to add cilantro <gasps> and lime to my That's rice. That's a great idea. I've never two, done that at home. Really I things. love it when I go to a restaurant and they have cilantro lime rice, but I've never done it at home, Steve. I love cilantro. I would eat cilantro for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It, it's really um, important with a lot of different kinds of Mexican I would food, agree. I think, to use Oh, it. you absolutely yeah. need the lime and, and cilantro yeah, to, to balance the heat in Mexican food. Absolutely. You need the acid and that cool. I find that cilantro. I'm happy you feel this way. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I discovered something called coolantro. 
in Puerto Rico. They have something called culantro there, which is different. It tastes different than cilantro, but it's it's called culantro. Really? And you put it in sofrito and you put it in, you know, some of the foods that they do. So my grandmother, who was born in Cologne, Germany, by the way, which I just found out today, wow. is the reason why... There's something called cologne. It's the reason why you brought me cologne Exactly, today. because that man was from Cologne, Germany, and that's how that name came about. Um, so my grandmother and grandfather and mother and father are all incredible, incredible cooks. And uh, I learned from the best. And they, I mean, my grandmother was always cooking bread and the br- smell of the bread. And it was very, very particular what kind of flour she got and what kind of salt she used for the bread. I remember her doing that. And then we always had a lot of Italian food as well, even though and my grandparents lived in Italy. My grandfather was a sculptor and he used the same marble from Carrara, Italy that um, Michelangelo carved with. Wow. Um, and they lived in Carrara, Italy. Um, and were Americans there, but the whole community embraced my grandfather. There's actually a sculpture in Carrara, Italy, that is my grandfather's sculpture. Um, but my grandmother used to make chicken cacciatore and um, all sorts of sauces as well, and she always talked about i profumi and how important i profumi was, which is uh, translated to the smell or the smells. And her <laughs> recipe was always to start with onions. <clears throat> Anytime you were having guests over to the house, you always sauteed some onions. And onions. <laughs> Garlic and onions. But, you know, onions was a big piece of hers um, that I'm telling you about. So e profumi mean, meant onions and um, carrots and celery. And that, to, to Julia Childs, is actually also mirepoix. So that is the beginning of all sauces. That is what all sauce should start with. Now, some people say you don't want carrots, but I like carrots and celery and... um, Okay, I'm not going to get in a huge debate with you how to start a sauce, you know, because uh, I don't start my sauce that way. I do start with onions and garlic and olive oil. Olive oil Mm -hmm. is one of the most important things, virgin olive oil. So this is something I just learned from my nutritionist, that you don't want to cook with olive oil because when it heats up, it turns into saturated fat. I've been doing that my whole life. I know. Me too. Me too, Steve. Apparently you're supposedly only supposed to eat olive oil cold. How about that, huh? <laughs> well, I'm going to dispute that. I with, know. With him. <laughs> well, I know. Because I've been know. I've been cooking with. I only cook with olive. Apparently, oil. you're supposed only. to only cook with avocado now. Be, avocado and coconut oil, because those coconut are the ones that can go hot. Very fattening, though. It's not about fat. It's about what happens when you do high heat with. I love coconut oil, though. I know. Me too. And you use it on your body as lotion, right? So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't worry about it. So, um, okay. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything anymore. Uh, That's it. We're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke, people. Sorry. Anyway, we talked about our family recipes. We can go there more again another time. And In the um, next show, can we talk about the best sex scenes from movies? Because you told me we were going to talk about that. We never got to it. And I have all these scenes here. Fuck it. We can't not do that. Okay. We were going to talk about the best sex scenes in movies, right? I came up with a whole list, and you could say whether you like these or not. These are the best sex scenes I've it. ever seen in the movie. Let's do ever. it. Wild Things, the threesome between Denise Richards, Matt Dillon, and ne- Nev Campbell. Don't Fantastic. know Fantastic. Okay. Halle Berry, who you mentioned before, mm-hmm. and Billy Bob Thornton and really got down in Monsters in Monster. Ball. That mm-hmm. was hot. Mm-hmm. Let's go all the way back to Angel Heart. You you want to talk about Mitch, Mickey Rook? Mickey Rook and Lisa Bonet. Oh that's yeah, fire right there. That's with the blood chicken and the blood and all that craziness. And then I got Boogie Nights. How can you not like Julianne Moore mm-hmm. and uh, Mark Wahlberg being directed in the scene by Burt Reynolds? I mean, with that his was giant fantastic. penis. <laughs> I got two more left for you. Okay. Yep. 
Yep, yep. Secretary. We got to oh. mention a Gyllenhaal in every episode, and I just oh. did what I don't like to do. Bump With James into the mic. Spader. He's um, such an James odd. James Spader and, and Ma- Maggie Gyllenhaal. And then my fi- final scene, which is amazing because most people know me know I love girl-girl action. My best scene is Black Swan, Natalie Portman and Mia Kunis. Best lesbian scene ever. Oh, yeah. There you go. Those are my best sex scenes on my list in films. Okay. I almost put Chloe Sevigny on there for the BJ scene, but I figured, you know, that's just a little too raunchy. It wasn't really a sex scene. Which one was that? From what movie? Oh, fuck. I hate when I can't remember (laughs) the fucking... You have to do All right, so I'm going to give you my two. I only have two because I didn't come super prepared, but I love um, Nine and a Half Weeks with Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger. I just love everything about that movie. It's naughty. It's, uh, you know, he's kind of like dominating her, but yet she's like the sex kitten. She loved it. She strip teases for him and they have like eating fruit and vegetables and all sorts of craziness out of the refrigerator and she's got her hand, you know, eyes closed and so he's like you know, sexifying the food with her. And um, oh, yeah, it turns me on. And then the blue room scene in Top Gun with Kelly McGillis and Tom Cruise. That's sexy. What was your movie with the BJ? It was the Brown Bunny, Vincent Gallo. Vincent Gallo the Brown somehow. Brown Bunny, that sounds It was dirty. a horrible <laughs> film. But, but it was a horrible film. But in the film, which ended up getting an X rating, uh, Chloe Savani actually gives Vincent Gallo a blowjob, and they it's in the film. Mm. Wow, so she must have had to really give him a blowjob. She really gave him a blowjob. <laughs> it wasn't fake at all. She was wow. really doing it. Okay. And if you um, like Chloe Savani and you want to see her give a blowjob, I highly recommend The Brown Bunny. Is that Bunny. how she pronounces her name? That's how I pronounce it. Okay. I don't think that's the correct pronunciation. Savani? Um, no, I don't think that's the pronunciation. But anyway, that, I can't remember how to pronounce it myself. I'm going to go ahead and give uh, an honorable mention to Officer and a Gentleman because... Richard <sighs> Gere. Oh, Richard Gere can do no wrong. He could always park his boots under my bed any day. <laughs> even as it's a silver fox. Um, and what was the woman that was in that? She's such a... I adore that woman, and I can't remember her name. Anyway, I love their love story in that movie. I love Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis's little, you know, teacher, older, you know, I'm sorry, I was looking at my phone. Were you talking about Deborah Winger? Yes, Deborah Winger. Thank you, thank you. I couldn't remember her name. I'm trying to think of what other... She was great in that film. She was incredible in that that film. film. Richie Gere was great, too. Oh, she... Oh, she... I mean, that... that, I just recently watched it again. Louis Gossett Jr. was played the drill sergeant. Yeah, that was good. I know we just segued away from sex, sorry. But that was a great film that I totally forgot about. a good movie. I just watched it again for the first time in years and years and years because I just love that love story. I would revisit that film. Mm. I'm not a big uh, military guy, but I would revisit that film. Oh, it's so... It's so poignant to, you know... Just the pushing yourself to the limits, you know, being part of a team. It's it, there's those, so many th- those girls themes. really wanted to nail get the the officers. She didn't necessarily, but her friend did. Her friend wanted to just get uh, herself an officer. Yeah. She landed, finally lands an officer, and then you know breaks his heart, and he ends up committing suicide. It's really sad. Anyway. Very. But um, their sex scenes are pretty, pretty smoking in that movie. And um, I, I you pick some good ones. No, the other ones that you said. A lot of those I don't remember. Nine and, and a half weeks was just sex from you know <sighs> beginning to end. <laughs> and it's like he takes her shopping and buys her lingerie and buys you, her clothes. You mentioned in the I notes, like the mental part of yeah, it. Yeah, you like the refrigerator scene, and mm-hmm. I hated that scene. Ugh. I mean, what do you mean. You he can gave, have a lot. Yeah, he gives her an olive. Well, yeah. He gives her. It's yeah, he like, gives her cough syrup. You know, yeah. it's so gross. I was like, it's all about Ugh. pushing the limits of your taste buds, and then you going and the having limits wild too sex. Far there, I think. <laughs> and yeah. I love, love, love Mickey Rourke. And I love, I do. love, love Kim Basinger. And I love them both together. Even and more. I love Mickey Rourke more. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, he looks like a. 
freaking animal hey, now. Hey, 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 oh, settle yeah, yeah. down a little What did he do to bit? himself, settle though? Down. He was one of the best-looking men in Hollywood. Yeah, and we're not, we were going to talk about one of your favorite <sighs> topics, Botox, but we're not going to get into yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to have to segue. If you want to talk about Mickey Rourke, I think that's what might have happened. I think he had plastic surgery. Oh, he's a plastic surgery nightmare. I don't like it. It's so sad to me. It's so fucking sad what he has done to himself. Why are people in Hollywood doing this? It's like, just age gracefully, age beautifully. Why are like, people not in Hollywood doing it? Why is anyone doing it? I know. I mean, I have, I have so many people in my life that are playing around with it. And it's like, you don't need to. You don't need it. You don't need Botox. You don't need fake eyelashes. To get what are a- we doing? Trying to look like Barbie dolls? It's like the Kim Kardashian, <clears throat> Kardashian family ruined it for Ugh. everybody. It's like, I'm seeing these 20-something-year-olds with lips that enter the room before they do. Their boobs <laughs> enter the room before they do it's like everything is like busted out like this giant face of lips the kardashians are like more living proof of how fucked up this country is kim kardashian has 217 million followers on instagram probably most from teenage (sighs) girls and how did she become famous in case anyone forgot Uh, sex tape yeah there you go. She made a sex tape and she became an overnight sensation. And the whole family has basically, uh, you know. In, it's really funny you know, that Bruce Jenner is the least it. famous one in the family and he's the one that won an Olympic gold medal. Sorry, Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, it, it's just the whole. And then and then don't forget OJ and the dad were besties. And that's, the you know, another reason. The dad was OJ's reason. lawyer. Yeah. I mean, they were intertwined in the world of celebrity dumb, but really, what celebrity dumb Ba-dum-bum. with a B at the end? <laughs> I like That's that. Good. Celebrity dumb. You, you know, we're going soon, but you didn't say your favorite word one time in this episode. I think the Kardashian family is completely redonkulous. <laughs> and we don't Thank want you. them to smother Kate us uh, at all, you're right? You're stealing my thunder. <laughs> I was going to no, say, I'm, I'm going to smother my hat Kate to your you. Word. I was going to say, I'm going to smother Kate you for Are using Are you overwhelmed? Do you have overwhelmption yet? Over- <laughs> Do I overwhelmption you? <laughs> I can't keep up with you. I know that. He never thought he'd ever say that those words. Steve moves a mile a minute every day, all day long, and he can't keep up with me. I can't. She's, <laughs> you're on another level. Am I? I've been so excited to tell people about our new things we have. Can I do it? Yes, please. We have a Patreon page. We do? We have a Patreon page. Thank you, Steve. It's patreon.com forward slash seems to me, S-E-A-M-S to me. And you can support our podcast there. Wouldn't you guys love to support our podcast? Do you are you enjoying this conversation you know that Steve and I have? You know what the minimum What's support the minimum? is? Five bucks a month. Awesome. Everybody that I know could easily support us with a fiver. Everybody you know better have a fin up on, on that site by, <laughs> by next week. Hey guys, can you spare a fiver, please? I Steve also, and I would like to, you know, not have to pay out of our pocket anymore. We want to make our engineer rich, and we want to bring him a lot of business. Well, we are going to get sponsorships from everybody as soon as they realize how friggin' fabulous this podcast is. We're going to have to overpay him now that you made him wear cologne, but, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Also, also, we have an Instagram page now, too. Voice Motel. It's, uh, oh, no, Mike has an Instagram page. I was just plugging Voice Motel. Motel. We have one now, too. Oh, Instagram uh, page. Yep, it's at seems to me sim. C I B Steve S T E V. So now we have. An why Instagram do you spell page. your name S T E E V? That's a whole episode. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, just making sure that everybody knows that because I've never met another Steve that spells it the way you it's do. It's actually simple. When I was in college radio, I, I was the music director, and there was another guy, Steve Peck, who was program director, and people used to leave us notes on the board. This but is you before never knew who text was who. messages mm-hmm. and yeah. computers and everything. Leaving messages right. on a board. <laughs> and for a joke, someone said, why don't you spell your name S-T-E-V? And everyone in the music industry knows me as S-T-E-V. It's brilliant. Because of that day when I was like a 19-year-old college kid. Well, so now you're telling everybody that they can call me Sib, which they can't. But that's okay. 
Did you want me to change no, the... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was trying to make I'm it Sib as short I'm Sib the art gal, too. I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, I just, I, you know, I, I don't like call my full you name. Sib. I know. Yeah, it's all good. It's only an Instagram page. I know. It's cool. Okay. It's but we cool. want 217 million followers like Kim Kardashian. Yeah, well... <laughs> Listen, she's actually brilliant. I mean, I got to tell you, I watched a David Letterman on her. She was brilliant in the sex tape. I was thought. she? I yeah. never saw it. No, she I'd was like boring. To actually, actually. See it. it was almost bad as the Paris Hilton sex tape. Wait, were they bad? What What, what are they doing on them? Are They're they doing it up sex, the butt? But they just. If I'm gonna go and watch sex on the internet, you I want to watch some people. really good. <laughs> were they doing, were they doing it up the butt? Uh, I'm just I don't curious. think it was I don't butt understand sex in either thing. one of them. No. I don't not, understand no, butt two. sex. And I'm, uh, we're going to talk about it someday. We may not have to talk about it today. Okay, I won't give you my opinion on it then. Oh, I need your opinion on it. Now, we're, we're going there, Steve. I'll go there. What's up? That's my opinion. I'll go there. Oh, you'll go there. <laughs> okay, see, I don't get it. I don't get it. If you're not I've gone gay, there, I should say. If you're not gay, why do you want to stick your penis up oh, an asshole? Oh, you're opening yourself, opening yourself up right now. And you're probably going to delete that you said that anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We're not talking about my asshole. We're talking about somebody else's asshole. <laughs> wow, we've come a long way from um, Francis <laughs> to mixed, mixed, I, can't even I told say you, it. sometimes you just need to talk for a while and then you'll get me going. Oh, my God. All right. We might have to go soon. I want to apologize to my naughty rose in heaven that's mm-hmm. listening. I didn't mean to this bring up. This is the thing. It's like my did, family's listening to we this. We didn't mean Christ to bring sakes. up butt sex, you know, sorry to the world. Okay, but you know so what? are we going to end on butt sex and that not talk about No, we're going to remind everyone again, Patreon, oh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward <laughs> slash seams, S-E-A-M-S to me. You know what I realize I, I really think is important is that I want to say an affirmation every week. Week. And so my affirmation for today that I heard this morning on my meditation, because I meditated again this morning, it's very short and sweet. My decisions today will define my tomorrow. That's a good one, huh? Yeah. There we go. Boom. Good Peace bye. out, people. <laughs> Oh, my God.